proactive pass blocking, okay? Howard Mudd, who, I, who may or may not be in here, uh, really made an impression on me about this. Jim Hannafin, Tom Lavat, 30, 40 years ago, they used something called an up kick, which I'll get into. But I firmly believe if you can short set, jump guys, get on them quick, regardless of the down and distance, other than if it's a lot of crazy three down, walk up backer stuff, the, the sooner you can take guys on, uh, the better, rather than backing up, et cetera. Now, I know there's always some different stuff. Uh, so anyway, the first thing, and I've got one of our Bengal players here who actually uh, used this technique I'll get to in about 10 minutes called an up kick, okay, which is a short set stepping forward, actually, with your outside foot mostly. And I charted him maybe 50, 60 times, and I don't think there was one time that he actually got beat. During the season, he was injured a little bit and didn't use the technique as much because of something his, his arms or hands had to do. So I'll be getting into a couple of things. But the first thing I want to talk about is the use of the outside hand on pass blocking, okay? So if I'm blocking Scotty right here, okay, and he's a much bigger guy, the closest thing to this guy on my outside shoulder is this hand, okay? So when, when, I'm, when I'm pass blocking out here, that shot that Paul Alexander talked about, is we call it an outside pillar, an outside punch, whatever, but a high outside hand, this is the closest hand to the guy, keeps your shoulder square. And the way you strike that thing is with a pendulum strike. Boom. You see how that come it's not up and out, it's boom. All right. And then the second hand, I'm trying to hurry through this because I want to get my guy up here. Then the second hand it boom and then boom, Mike Tyson uppercut. And the reason for the second hand being low is if the guy goes inside, you can go immediately to a clamp. When you punch with two hands and the guy goes inside, you lock your post foot forward and you cannot recover inside. The other thing is that when you shoot your outside hand, okay, one arm is longer than two. Alex has heard me say that. Here's two-handed punch. Here's a one-handed punch, all right? One arm is longer than two. That's what the defensive guys do. When you shoot the outside hand, okay, fellas, you're always worried about it getting knocked down. If your arms are a decent length and you shoot your outside hand, even if you try to knock it down, Scotty, okay, that as soon as you shoot it, boom, you bring it back. You shoot. I don't mean you're faking it. You're boom, boom. Boom, boom. There, if he does get it a little, he really shouldn't get it because you're proactive. You're not waiting, you're proactive. Okay, even if I have to go, boom, okay? But if he does get it, when you drive it back, that gets you back on your center of gravity. If you just leave it there, he is going to knock it down. So if I'm going, bam, bam. So if I did it to Scott, well, Scott, he does it to me. Don't kill me. But don't, I got this thing. So if you just shoot, now watch how fast he brings it back. Just, boom, boom. Okay, so we're worried about getting the outside hand knocked down. But if you're, if you're, boom, boom, boom. And what lengthens this outside hand is the inside elbow driving back. Watch, see this? Whatever that force is, that lengthens this punch. And then this hand is ready for the lift. This hand is ready for the clamp if he goes inside. High hand, low hand. Paul was kind of talking about, well, I'm talking about proactive, not waiting. So as I'm going to get into this, the first couple of clips will be a normal kick slide technique using the outside hand. Then I'll get into what I call the up kick. And after we show 15 or 20 of these, I'm going to bring Alex Redmond up, who is the player that is using this technique, okay? And he was terrific at it, all right? So let's just take a look at these clips, all right? All right, this is 62. This is Alex, okay? So all he's practicing, he's not practicing. Can we get the... I don't want to be the only guy that's a prick. Can we get the lights down here a little bit? It's too... Right. <laughs> if we can. Okay, so bottom line is, you'll notice he's moving his hand, but you notice the one, two, we're good. Just let me notice, if you notice, 
Outs high outside, low inside, all right? All right, and so let's go to the next one. I just figured these things out, how you flip this thing, okay? So I think we got an idea about that, okay? Okay, now he's just really trying to fit outside, inside. Where's the aim? Where's the aiming point? It's probably uh, slightly above the outside pack. You generally have an inside target because you don't want to get beat inside unless the center is coming. I'm not worried about that stuff. I just want to show you the clip. Okay, are we good now? Can you see this right? Bang, bang. Boom. He's proactive. Do you want to be proactive? He's not reactive. He's proactive, all right? So what I'm saying to you, boom, boom, okay? Uh, we're good, right? We see the drill, okay? All right. And what do you think using the outside arm does for you? It keeps the what? Shoulder square. If I'm a tackler and I'm going out on a wide guy, what do they all like to do? Turn. Well, if I, my shoulders are square as so I'm going out here, even if I haven't hit them yet, eventually I might turn or whatever. But as soon as I start to kick slide, I'm thinking inside hand, shoulders aren't, so you're going to turn. Absolutely, right? Okay. So, here we go. Okay. Here's Alex right here. One, two. All right. Now, now, watch this. One, two, three. Watch how quick his hands are. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay. Okay. We're good. So, we're just talking about the outside hand and the inside lift. There's a starting point. All right, here's a guy in pass rush. Let's just see how the fit is. All right, now maybe he might be a little soft here, but you see the outside hand. Now watch the inside lift. You see how you, when your guy goes inside, you can move. You actually drop your post foot. Now here's Alex right here, okay? All right, now let's just talk about a low inside hand. Don't worry so much about his outside hand. Okay, which he normally shoots it, but he didn't hear. When your inside hand is low and the guy goes inside, you can move and clamp it. When your inside hand is high, it locks your hips. So the reason to have an inside hand low is to stop the inside rush where you can clamp it and wrench it. It might pull your hips in. So here's an example of the guy going inside. And because Alex's inside hand is low, he can position himself. Now, he's actually going to drop his post foot. When the guy goes inside, you have to drop your foot to stay in front of him. Okay? So here we go. Here he is again. All right? See the inside hand? So you know how like you're worried about guys that spin? Guys that's, now, I, now what I would really like Alex to do here is really punch with that outside hand, but that inside hand, if a guy spins on you, as long as your inside hand is low, you don't have to worry, oh, he spun, I don't know what to, that inside hand is low, it automatically clamps the spin, and you don't even have to really be ready for it. But if you shoot two hands, or you shoot your inside hand, they're gonna get you in there, okay? For years, people never talked about the outside hand. It was up till maybe a year or two or three that people were had enough balls, cool unis, to use the outside hand. I don't know why it was such a no-no, uh, okay? Uh, all right, so again, we're talking about a low inside hand for the clamp, all right? All right, now let's watch the right tackle here, okay? Are we good? One, two, we're good? All right. Let's watch the left guard here. One, two. See that two? Okay. All right, I think we're gonna watch the right tackle here, okay? One, now he comes up underneath him, he left, he actually lifts his elbow. See how square his shoulders are? Pretty square, right? All right. Okay, now here's Alex. Here's the right guard. Now he's not up kicking, okay? He, he might want to bend a little bit more, but you see the one, two? Look at it right there. Look at him, 62. Bang. Now watch the inside. Boom. He's got him, right? All right, now. I'm going to get into this up kick thing, all right? I did not invent this thing. 
They did this back 40, 50 years ago. I didn't, I didn't know how to coach it. I never coached it. To me, okay, if you said, coach, what's the best way to get on a guy quick? Howard Mudd taught me how to jump a guy where you fire your feet. You know, you fire your feet and you get close to the guy. You don't fall on your face. So you close the space and then if the guy moves, you can move laterally to stay in front of him, get your hands on him, you've jumped him. But even a quicker way is to close the space right now. So for example, Scotty is, I'm right here, so he's on my outside, bang! See what I did? I shot my outside hand right now and my outside foot went forward. Well, that goes against all premise. What, the, Coach, what, what the hell is that? Well, my eyes stay inside. See where my eyes are? So my target is still inside, boom, okay? And I step up with that foot. Which foot do you think ends up being back? Your inside foot is back now. The guy goes inside, you can move because you've dropped your post foot for the guy going, you don't have to keep your post foot up. You've stopped the outside move with the outside step and hand. You're inside out with your eyes. Your inside hand is low. And when the guy goes inside, you drop your post foot to stay in front of him with the clamp. So you take away the inside, you with me, with the low inside hand, because you're inside out. You are in, I'm inside out on Scott. You see where I am? But I'm outside in with my hand. Okay? So you'll see the drill now. Let's just look at some of these plays. Okay? Are we good? You see what he's doing? All right? Now when the guy goes inside, whether you drop your post foot or it stays parallel, he's practicing that. Here's Alex right now, okay? So watch what he does, okay? All right. Just a drill. All right? His first step was forward. See, the, see the, his inside hand might be a little lower, but what I'm saying is as soon as he shoots that hand and the guy goes out, you drop your outside foot, even though you step forward with it. All right? Okay? Now, let's say the guy's a little wider and you don't feel like you have long arms. Now you fire your foot, feet laterally. Pop, pop, pop. I move sideways. Pop, pop, pop. And then I go forward with my outside foot. So it would be like a foot fire laterally. So say Scotty's out here a little bit and I, don't, I can't reach him right away. So I, bu, 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 boom. All I've done was moved laterally because the guy's wide and then I put the up kick, up kick, the kick foot goes up in the outside hand. Proactive, not reactive, okay? All right, so this guy's doing it. Okay, see the inside hand? See how, see how fast he pulls the outside hand off? All right. Now here's Alex right here. Now he'll foot fire. Okay. Bup, bup, bup. Then he'll go to the up kick. Okay. Okay. Now th this guy's going too far. You have to stay inside out with your eye. So he he's going to get beat inside. You don't have to go very far because your outside hand does the damage. All right. Now here's a tackle. Say they're getting an angle, all right? So say he goes kick, slide, kick, slide, and then eventually he puts his outside foot forward and he should really use his outside hand. But I'm just showing you how tackles might do this, okay? The, uh, this is the right, say this is the right tackle and he's kicked out there and he ends up with his outside hand and his outside foot, okay? Don't worry so much about the drill. I'm just showing you that how you reach a little bit with the outside foot forward and the outside hand, okay? There you go. All right, all right. Now, watch this. This is center, all right? Now, I truly believe this, even though I didn't invent this, okay? When you have a shaded center, and the center's got that guy, okay? He's got, even if they're sorting, double reading, even though this guard's got a double read, I would not set the center and the guard to the same side. Okay, you with me now. The right guard's got a linebacker over him or they're double reading, they're sorting out the protection. That center, when he snaps the ball, he can step up, bang. Or maybe it's parallel, it's either parallel to bang. 
He's going to get on that shade faster than if he took a kick step. You know how, like in pass rush, you take a kick, boom, that guy's by you. As long as that front side guard, boom, gives him body presence without blowing out of there, okay? Even if this guard blew out of there, this center can stop him faster, boom, with an up kick, and then if he has to react back. 90% of you don't believe me. 100% of you wouldn't try it, okay? So I'm going to show it to you. Okay, so this is a center using an up kick with his snap hand. We're good? Now he foot fires a little bit. Okay, we're good? Here's Alex right here now, okay? Here's the young man that's gonna come up. Now, now watch what he does. He kind of drops his inside foot, okay? And then he, you see him fire that hand? Now, you see where that inside hand is and you see where that post foot is? to get in front of the guy. So really, you're taking away the outside and the inside. And the reason you're taking away the outside is because the combination of the stepping forward in the hand neutralizes the outside charge, but you end up with your post foot back and your inside hand ready for the inside move. This is all done with that kind of action, okay? We'll move on here a little bit. All right, now here's the center. He's going to his left, all right? Now the nose happens to cross face him, which is, which is good anyway, right? But you see the center, most centers would kick to the left, right? I'm saying the center could probably do this the majority of the time and he'll get on him faster. Okay, all right. Here's the center, he's moving to his left, all right? Now again, maybe the guy rushing him isn't uh, an all-pro, but you see what I'm saying? Now, that left guard, um, you know what I mean by sort protections, how the left guard and the left tackle are like double reading? They're not pulling. That left guard doesn't have to go anywhere. That left guard could actually step up, boom, and still, because when they do blitzes and you've got to block three guys for four, they'll come to you. They'll come to you. That left guard does not have to vacate. Okay? Now, so let's say that Say that left guard stayed on that shade right there. Where can the center then eventually help to the three technique, even though that's not his man, right? We're good with the center? Okay. Watch this center now. Kansas City, right? He's like taking two peepee -pee steps. He's kind of foot firing, but he's not dropping that foot. Now here's Alex, okay? This is a clinic, and number 62 is back in the room, and he's going to come up here in a few minutes. So this is the guy doing it. He does it versus ETs, he does it versus TEs, he does it versus pitch. Now, would you do it versus all three down, walk around, crazy picks and stuff? No. You would do it common sense when you, what are the occasions that you want to short set a guy? Those would be the times you would do it, okay? Centers can do it, tackles can do it, but let's watch this right guard. All right, again, some of these are practice. All right, so what did you notice about him? Did he, did, he, did, he, did he block him on the first step? He blocked him on the what step? Third. So he foot fired, see the right foot go sideways, see the left foot go back, and now what? Boom! See how fast he brings that right hand back? Watch him drive the left elbow back. Watch him here. Okay? So he moves a little bit. All right? Here he is again. Look at it. He did it on the third step. All right, now where do you think his target is? Right there. Where is his eyes, do you think? Right there. I don't have any answers from you guys. I'd like to say, and I'd like to say he's inside out with his eyes but he's outside in with his hand. You see that inside foot back and the inside hand down? That stops the inside rush. All right, now we got this originally from this left guard from Green Bay. Remember I, about five, seven years ago, I brought this up and I said, this is where we got this stuff. See this Green Bay guy? So what do you notice he draw, does with his right elbow? See him drive it back? 
That lengthens the punch with the left arm. See him step forward? Here he is again, the left guard. All right? I think he's with Miami now. All right, look. He's inside out. All right, left guard again. We're going to get back to Alex here in a minute. Bo, you, you see how fast that hand get first touch wins, but it's proactive. It isn't reactive. Is there shit about being on the ball, off the ball, two-point stamp? Probably. Okay? Are we good? Do you see his inside hand ready for the inside move? You see it, right? He's taking away the outside move with his outside hand. That guy sprints outside on a TE. You will get your hands on him before he takes one step. Okay? And I did not invent this thing. All right, here's the right guard for... Kind of, he's a little more, uh, you know, it's not a kick step, right? We see that. All right, here's the right guard from San Francisco, right? You good? Now, you do not, the second step, you don't overcoach. So the inside foot, so I think some, in the old days, some coaches think, well, you take a step with the outside foot, then you bring your inside foot. Don't do that. Let it happen naturally. Boom, the guy goes inside, you move that inside foot. If the guy goes outside, you drop your outside foot to stay in front of him. Don't overcoach the inside foot. You're either going to foot fire and take an outside shot, or you're going to take an outside shot with your first step. You're going to hit him on your first, your third, your fifth, or your seventh step for tackles. Maybe the fifth step for tackles. You're inside out. Your aiming point is probably the outside pick. You may hit him in the face mask if the guy's wide. Am I losing anybody? There we go. We're good with 61. Excuse me. Now here's our boy. Glue into this right guard now. See the one, two? He's got his son back there watching. He's training him early. All right, watch him now. Watch, watch the right guard. I'd like his inside hand a little lower. You see how fast he gets on him? Here he is again. Look at it. Watch him drive that inside elbow back. See the up kick? Here he is again. Now the guy went out, so he drops the outside foot, right? Here's against another. Watch it here. Now the guy just contained, so that's not a big deal here. Watch this here. Let's see what we got here. Watch this. There's a TE. Would you say that's a clinic? Do you think I just put this on here because he did that good? I, I put them all on here that I could find. Here he is. Okay, so the guy goes inside. What? See that inside foot? See that inside hand? Now watch him switch. See, he's inside out right there. You see how inside out he is with his head, his eyes, and the post foot hasn't really moved anywhere. And the post foot will become the drop foot if he goes in. All right. Here we go. Watch this. He's on this guy before the guy can get off his stay out of his stance. Look at this. Same thing, Buffalo. All right, now the guy goes in. You see how the post foot is already dropped? Now watch this. He knows when that guy goes way in. That it's a far twist. He don't have to follow that guy. He knows the difference between a long slant, a long scoop, whatever you call it, and just somebody that's coming inside of him. 
Most players would know that if, if you showed them big pinches, right? That, that guy pinching on him is going to go to the center. He's going so flat. Let's watch here. Right. Watch this. Watch how he jolts that guy before he can even get the knockdown on him. There's another TE. I don't know if we saw this. I don't think we saw this before. Watch this. The guy just stopped. All right, I got two more, and then I'll, I'll bring Alex up here, okay? All right, now this guard from Green Bay, he thinks the guy's a little wide, so he takes like a kick slide, he's up on his toe, but then he goes to the up kick because the guy's pretty wide. He doesn't use one hand like, I, like Alex does. And then here's another one with Alex, okay? Now here there's an ET, right? And he gets jolted a little bit because, you know, the, the tackle's got to do a pretty good job. But All right, so I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to bring Alex up. And Alex, I'll take the boy. Okay, and then you can block Scotty, and Alex probably... When you're talking, you could face that way. You know what I mean, big guy? You could face that way because they could see your feet from behind. This is Alex Redman from UCLA. Let's give him a hand. Okay, yeah, just do what's natural. We're going to do it down here? No, you can right up on the stage. All And if Alex, if you'd face that way as you're talking, but then just tell them what you're looking at, what you're thinking about, and make sure you use the shit I talked to you about. <laughs> hey, Alex, one more thing. You've got to talk loud because you don't have a microphone. Okay. So you're just, so where I like to aim is near side shoulder or even just like where that chest begins. That way if he wants to go out, you could just, this, this post foot that you had is now your drop, your drop kick, but you could still push him out with that foot. He doesn't, you know what I'm saying, you don't just have to, oh he's on my edge, like he's out here. You just post, 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 and just widen him out. Same thing, you, you are almost inviting him to your inside, your inside strong arm so you could clamp. I tore my shoulder like real early in the season, so like when I go to do this and they go inside, I'd be like, oh God, the world's ending, but pretty much you're inviting him into that inside move. Alex, in most all your clips though, you were punching him on the outside number. That's where you landed it. Yeah, okay. but see, I was a little too far. I wanted to be a little, a little, tighter. little, little closer, a little yeah, tighter. I got you. So even, even if you have the foot fire out to him, you can still and then switch. And then, you know, what else, what else should I emphasize, Coach? What, do you want to do a cross face? Yeah, why don't you, when he pinches inside, how you actually drop that post and clamp them, you okay. know what I mean, Al? I got you. That's because his inside hand is low, it's not high. He does the damage with his outside hand. How about a TE, Al, when he goes out, how you can really get on him, you know, Scotty, maybe just start okay. out and then go out. Watch how he flattens out that three technique. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, you want, you're inviting him inside, but you almost want him to rush your edge. It's kind of like, oh, you're not going to get inside, but I really want you 
to go this way. So I go muddy it up over here. I don't want all the pressure coming in from the inside where the quarterback's supposed to be. Somewhere. Yeah. Could you do this for me one time? You know how we just would teach the jump, how you would just foot fire and jump? Now watch him just jump a guy without the up kick. You know, you know, Al, how we would kind of foot fire first and then close the space. Watch his feet move. And he still would favor the outside punch and the inside lift. If a guy bull rushes him, he might use a double arm. The point is that what you saw in the film was him really proactive with that outside hand. And he was not hesitating at all. Good job. Thank you, Al. All right. I'm still, I'm still up. How much you weigh? Three fo three forty, three fo zero. <laughs> These are the size you need for offensive guard. So, All right, buddy. thanks for coming. Thanks, see you soon. Hope to see you next week. Right. Okay. Okay. So, from what what he told you, and what we saw was not exactly the same. So he when he was talking about this, for you know how players think some times they think a little bit different. That his best punches to make sure that we. Make sure we're on the same page. His best punches were when he hit the outside. I think what he might have meant some, sometimes, maybe the guy was so wide and he felt he reached too far. Okay, I think he kind of felt that. But I, I think that if you would take it for punching the outside peck, okay, but you're still head and eyes inside, etc. You saw him switch TEs. You saw guys have big slants and uh, whatever. So uh, I, all the reason I am showing you this this guy did it, okay? And uh, he never did it before. So that's why he didn't really have any bad habits on it because, you know, whatever. Okay, so let's, let's move on uh, to where I am now, okay? All right, so let's watch this right tackle now from... Uh, uh, Jacksonville, okay? So he's a tackle and he's got a wide guy, okay? Here we go. All right. Now, I would, if I was this right tackle, I would do what Alex did, okay? I would punch with that outside hand. I wouldn't reach with two hands. But you see he's do whether this is on his fifth or his seventh step. See? That goes against everything we've learned. Oh, you got to keep kicking. Well, bullshit you do. You understand me? You're going to get closer to the guy with your outside hand and your outside foot. Now, he's biding a little time because there might be a TE where he might have to switch it. So the tackles can do a, a semi-vertical or whatever you want to call it, and they don't have to go to this thing right away. If the guy was right on him, like a tight five technique, do it. Okay? So these are, this is the guy Parnell's his name. He's the guy that does this the best, Jeremy Parnell. I believe that's his name. All right, here's the right tackle again. Okay, he's reaching with two hands, but you can see the up kick, right? All right, here's a Baltimore guy. All right, now I would not use the inside hand, but that's a good look at the up kick, but he's going a little too far. Right there, stop. Shoot your outside hand and your outside foot. That's the fastest way to get on a guy. Why? Because it's your nearest hand, it's your nearest foot. Okay? Right tackle again. I would use the outside hand. Okay, let's go to play number. Uh, all right, here we go. I have to go back to a couple of plays here real quick. Uh, well, I'll go back to these plays if I have time at the end because I'll show you something. But. What I want to go to now is 55. Okay. All right. All right. Now, let's say you're the left guard, okay? All right. So he's doing the same thing reversed. He's using an up post. 
you would, instead of just posting laterally, he's stepping forward with that foot, okay? Now, that's the fastest way to get on that guy, okay? Now, we're worried about the inside, right? Let's say I don't have any, let's say I have center help. Say the center's really giving me a lot of help, okay? Or maybe the center's setting that way. That guard could do that. He could step forward and use an up post. Not a parallel post, an up post. If the center's going the other way, he better move inside a little bit. And he probably ought to drop his post foot to move inside. Am I losing anybody? That left guard is one-on-one -on -one versus that shade or that tilted guy, right? If that center is vacating, you with me? That guard, left guard's got to move. Remember like Coach was talking about earlier, Coach Forrester, you better step inside. But the point I'm saying is, let's say here's a shaded n nose guard and the left guard's got to come down on him like a slide protection. If that center's going the other way, you with me? I wouldn't be safe using that technique. I would be safer, watch what I'm doing. You'll think I'm crazy. I drop the post foot to stay in. You see, there's a big hole there. Even if I go like this, boom, the center's leaving. I would drop this foot. Look what I'm doing. And which hand do you think I'd use? The outside hand. I didn't step forward now. That's a tilted nose guard. The center's going the other way. I drop that foot to stay in front. If this foot's locked, he's going to beat me. If the center is there, then I can go forward. Boom. With my inside hand and my inside foot. Okay? So what we're looking at is situations where the guard, for example, can step forward with his inside foot. We saw situations with Alex where the guard was stepping forward with his outside foot and outside hand. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, what's the left tackle doing? I just happened to see it. See what he's making contact with? See his outside foot up? But just use the outside hand. Don't go very far. So the left tackle is doing a little bit what we talked about earlier. All right, so we're watching the left guard. Let's watch the right guard. Same thing, right? Up post. Drive that right arm back in that right arm. See how fast that hand gets on him? I think too much of the time the high school kids, even the college kids I work with, they're like this. Even if they're going to punch, there's, there's no proactivity. Boom! 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 I may have to move a little bit. Boom! It's all, uh, I'm worried of getting the hands. You're going to get your hands knocked out if you're never proactive. Okay? And that's jumping, a la Howard Mudd. All right? Okay, we're good with this right guard on this up post, right? See him drive that elbow back? Right guard. All right. I would still go left hand, right hand. Why do you think I would go left hand, le inside foot, inside hand? Because one arm is longer than two. And the punch is actually Scotty's punch. You know how you turn the doorknob and all that stuff. Okay. We're just watching the right guard step up. Okay? See the right guard drive his right elbow back a little bit? Now, what do you notice about his left hand? It's too what? Too slow. The left hand's not on him right now. It's not proactive. How fast can you lock that arm out? They shouldn't knock it down because you're going to get it on him before he even can get the knockdown. So, so what if they knock it down? As I'm going here, what's the key? As I shoot that hand, what do I do with it? <laughs> Bring it back right now. That'll get you back on balance. The combination of this, 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 will get. but if you just leave your hand there, they can knock it down because you haven't done anything to get yourself back balanced up. <sighs> All right, left, right guard. Up kick, right? Or up post? All right. All right, here's Alex right here. He does the same thing, right? The only thing is, see the center kind of leave him right there? The center doesn't have to leave him. 
even though he's going to the left. Okay? Here's the thing that I don't think coaches... Let's say the center had a pickup to the left. The linebacker, he's not coming anyway. There's no reason why that center can't bang, bang, and get over here right away. But centers just vacate. You look at the number of times that thing ha things happen where a center's got a slide. They could spend some time hitting somebody over here and still get back on their angle, get depth, get width, whatever you want. The, my why last year, remember what he said? Centers are not aggressive enough. They're just sitting in the hole. They know who their responsibility is, but they don't take a chance. Hey, I'll go hit the linebackers are seven yards deep. There's nobody walking up and creeping in shit where it's crazy shit. <laughs> I'll show you some of those things later that, you, that I'll make a point with, all right? All right, now here's Alex, the left guard, okay? This is a year ago. The center's just leaving him, which is not good, okay? Even if they're full sliding to the right, you know, everybody's sliding to the right, that center shouldn't turn his pads. So what the center is, he turns his pads like that and runs over there. That center should at least get depth and width and stay square to help the left guard. But if this left guard, who was Alex here earlier, if he knew that center was just going to vacate to the right, okay, he's got no chance, right? So what do you think that left guard, Alex, who you saw up here, if he knew that center was full sliding to the right and vacating, which the center should not do, what do you think that left guard should do? Drop his post foot. He should drop his post foot and he becomes the other side guard. And then he can stay in front of the guy. And do not give them your inside hand. Okay? Drop this foot, and this hand is low for the inside move, and this is the punch hand, the outside hand. A lot of you think talking about. True story, right? I'm going inside, what hand's he gonna get? This hand. All right? What's the only time I would use this hand if I was proactive with it? I'm proactive, boom! Man, I got an error, all right? I'm the left guard, I better drop this foot. Okay? And then, boom! Okay? Because they tell that center to blow out of there. That guard's got no chance. I remember coaching for the Bills, and we had a center named Melvin, who, was, who did a good job, but the way I was coaching, I had Melvin move a little too much, and, and Doc, my right coach, I can leaving me, and I'm post foot, blub. If I knew what I know now, if that center had to leave and not help, I'd drop that post foot every time. Who gives a shit if the guy goes outside? He's already in a tilt. Okay, so we see the issue with the center leaving and the left guard versus that guy. No good. All right, New England Patriot. This is an outstanding guard, too. I think his name is Mason, all right? So let's see what the center does first. See the center go? Now, if I don't care if I had Anthony Munoz here, right? The greatest player ever played. Look at that hole. That, that, that guard's got no chance. Zero. Okay, so if that guard knew that that center was le leaving and he wanted to use the up post with the inside foot, he better do what? He better do what right now? He better land it. He better land it right now. Okay, you with me? He can't like, so watch this guy. Well, then he does get it. He gets in there. Or what else? Hey, I know that center. I'm, I got short arms. I better start dropping my post foot and using the other hand. Okay? The thing that might be hard to buy is why would you drop your inside foot? You'll turn. No, you won't. You'll drop your inside foot to stay square as if you're the other side guard. Okay? We're good? Anybody confused? Okay? I bet nobody's got the balls. <laughs> okay. Oh, watch 61. See, he didn't really take it right now. See, see, the, see his left elbow? He didn't really step up. He didn't really close the space. He didn't really go up post with the inside hand. Right now, proactive, right? No chance. That's to it. All right, now let's watch this right guard here from Dallas. Let's watch. Now he knows, right? Because I think... Uh, I was on the same page with Coach Callahan. So regardless of what happens, this center, this right guard knows, man, I don't think I'm going to get much center help. So what if he ends up? He ends up with his post foot back. And he actually kind of skips to it. All right, watch this right guard. However he ends up, right? 
Maybe it's a natural thing. You have to drop that inside leg to stay square with the guy. And I'll watch this. Here's where I'm almost 100% sure that you can step forward with your outside foot, okay? Watch. Now, he didn't step forward right away, but watch what, I mean, I don't know why he did this, but he's, uh, bottom line is, let's say, let's say you moved inside and you ended up with your outside foot forward, okay? See this right guard? Who cares if the guy goes outside? You're going to drop that outside foot and stay in front of him anyway. You need to drop your inside foot to take away any tough inside move if you really don't have much center help. The tackle has to do the same thing against those three, four ends, you know, where the guard goes down on the shade and that offensive tackle's got to take that defensive end or tackle in a three, four defense that pinches way the hell in there. You better drop, you better drop that inside foot and hit him with your outside hand or you can't cover that gap. But we're all schooled on the post foot. And I pounded the post foot to everybody. But like a crazy person I am, I change shit all the time. For the better, I hope. Right? Okay, let's watch the right guard. When the guy hits him, he automatically drops the post foot. Here's the right guard again. So, boop, boop. See that foot go back? And, and probably, and I'm not 100% sure, probably right now, okay, I might either do a double under because it's kind of a bull rush, or I'd hit him with my outside hand. Why? Because one arm is longer than two. Here's the right guard. I'm sorry, left guard, my fault. Okay, watch the left guard now, okay? I don't think he knows exactly why he did it, but when he, see the center leave? Watch the left guard. What foot does ends up back? What foot ends up back with the left guard? Inside, it's the only way he's gonna stay in front of the guy, all right? Uh, and which hand is he kind of using? It's hard to tell because he's kind of putting both up. But from what I was telling you guys, and, I'm, and I dropped that foot, all right, what hand is he going to try to knock down? Inside hand. So use your outside hand. When they line up inside of you, the nearest hand they're going to knock down is that in, your inside hand. Do not give them that inside hand. Take it with your outside hand. They're not ready for it. And then the inside hand is ready to clamp or lift, like we saw right from the start, right? All right, now here's the right tackle. Okay, see the right guard go down? Okay, watch what the right tackle does. He up posts, whatever the hell that's called, right? He could up kick with his, I don't know which would be better, he could up kick with his inside foot, up post, I mean up kick with his outside foot, up post with his inside foot. But if he was nervous about shit, if he was nervous, because he's a tackle now, and there's a big hole inside, he's not like a guard that's in the middle, I probably, oh, what I do, that guy's, I'd probably start moving my inside foot and just start the foot fire. <laughs> And then, which is the closest hand if he's out there? Ba boom! Okay? If he goes inside, boom, 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 I'd probably drop that foot, clamp, whatever. How many guys have had a trouble with a, a defensive end that's in a four eye or a four and the guards vacating inside? There's a big ass hole in there. You can't block him. I mean, I don't give a shit. If that guy's good, he's gone. Right? He's picking that center, whatever. Okay, now let me go back some where I think the center, okay, and Bob, I think I got like 10 minutes, whatever you tell me, I got. I want to introduce a, a guy, I, I want to introduce a guy that I coached at the Carolina Panthers. First round draft choice. 
Okay, he came in, and he was a good player. But he, he, he had a technique, and it wasn't his fault. I think we, I coached it. He, he would step up and back up straight up. So we wanted him to widen the pocket a little bit, you know, like angle A or B, whatever the hell we call it. So one day I gave our assistant line coach, Blair Bush, I said, I want you to take Brockermeyer the whole day. He not even go to teamwork. I think he maybe did, but I, I had that clear it with the head coach. And this assistant coach worked on this technique for over and over and over, and he became one of the greatest pass blockers at left tackle in the National Football League. He weighed over 300 pounds. He, he retired. He lost some weight. He's got four boys that are all star players in Texas. I think two of them are going to Texas maybe. The other one goes to Rice. He's got another one somewhere. He knows how I know that. But I want Blake Brockermeyer to stand up. Let's give him a big hand. He, he coaches at SMU now. So he's a terrific guy. I love that guy. He was afraid of clowns. This is no shit. So every once in a while, we bring him one of those clowns. All right. OK, here we go. All right, I'm going to go to play 11. I'm going to cover some shit that I didn't cover before. All right, here's the right guard, Alex. Now watch. He's just jumping. He's not up kicking. He's foot. If you didn't know shit about that up kick, if I confuse the shit out of you, this is the best way to jump. So he had a guy kind of outside of him. He just fired his feet. Watch. He didn't go north right away. Boom, boom, boom. And he went. Boom, and then he closed the space. Boom, boom. If you just go right now, the guy will make a fancy move on you. You close the space. You only go part way to him, but you fire your feet. You do the same thing with the hands, right? You could double under. You could outside punch, inside punch, blah, blah, blah. But watch his feet to close the space. This is different than the up kick or the up post, right? Watch him. Watch how fast his feet move. Watch him. Are we good? You know, you don't, it almost looks like you don't even know what the hell he's doing, right? That's how fast he's firing his feet. <clears throat> okay. All right, now let's talk about the center. Okay, all right. All right, now, here's what's happening. Here's where you guys aren't going to have any nuts, okay? <laughs> you might have a couple. All right. The left guard and the left tackle and the center probably have got the nose, the middle backer, 90 and 50. You know, they're sorting. Does that make sense to you? They're like doing a double read. They got three guys that got to block four. If the fourth guy comes, the quarterback's got to throw it to somebody, right? Okay, but who's the most dangerous man? If you're playing a good a team that's got a shade and a three technique, who's generally the best rusher? The three technique. Thank you. If somebody would have said the shade, I would have, oh, my God, I'm crazy, right? <laughs> All right, so w with everything, if you could do it. Now, I know we're not always helping the tackles, okay? If you could do it, where would you like the center's back foot to be? To the side of the what? To the three. Here we're wasting the center and the left guard to the same side as the shade. Okay? So let's visualize the center stepping forward with the up kick. Okay? Bang! Okay? You would be still got this nose. Watch this guard just whether he steps up and up kicks or up posts or just hangs there. That center can end up where? To the three. But because we think the centers and the guards guys are over there, the center has to set this way, the guard has to set this way, and you got the poor guard versus the three technique all alone. If the center mastered that up kick, boom, that left guard may leave him, but he will stale, he will stymie him just like Alex did those three techniques, and he'll be able to recover and block him one on one. Am I losing anybody with what I'm talking about? Okay, so let's watch what I'm saying. Well, they're still looking at the peep. They're still looking at the ba looking at the backer. It doesn't matter. They got their eyes on them. What's that? Center's going. 
so wait, wait, wait a minute. No, they're, they're sorting over here. All right? If they, if they do a stunt, what's the nose going to do? He's going to cross the center's face. So the center's got him. You really, when you see a nose guard and they're doing all kinds of stunts, the nose guard, so the center's in, the center still got him. I got you, but I've got, I've got the foot drop to the side he cross faces. You with me now? He's landing that hand the same place that Regman did where he lied. All right? <laughs> right? I mean, you're stepping and you're trying to land it like on the outside pick, but you're inside out. You got your other foot back, like the kid from Buffalo. We, remember we saw the one shot of that? Okay, so let's, I'm, I'm giving you some examples of that. All right? Do you see, you see, who do you think's playing three technique for the Bengals? His name is Geno Atkins. And look where the center, the center may end up helping him, but that center could easily say, I got the nose. I'm going to stay with him all the way. But he can stone the hell out of him, you with me, and still have body presence with this foot. If he had to stay with him, he had to stay. But as soon as that center starts to vacate this way, because what's the left guard doing? The left guard's going to end up what? Let's pretend we're all left guard. What's he doing? You got the shade anyway. Well, what if he had to pick up the end coming inside? Who cares? He's going to come to him. The end's going to come to him. Guard when you're sorting or dueling. Leave that center. Don't leave him. It's almost like there'd be a pick, you know, a nose east on. Okay. 13. Okay. Let's go to this next one here. Okay. All right, all right. The center, the left guard, and the left tackle, who do you think they got? They got the one, they got the backer, they got the end, and they got somebody else out here. All right? Or maybe they just got that guy. I don't know. Let's see what the back's doing. Let's see if the back's going the other way. Okay, well, so I think the center, left guard, and left tackle were there. So, okay, so what could that center do? He's going to his left. What could he do? He, his responsibility is to his left, which is good. All right? Don't worry about the three tip. But what could that center do? I snap the ball, and I could do what? Boom, boom, boom. But look what he did. He just went, hmm. Mawai would be pissed. Why can't that center pound that one technique? Shoulder square, get back in the hole if he has to. Still eyeball the backer, right? What could the left guard do there? I don't know if he could do an up post or an up kick. He could, but don't be reactive, be proactive. Right? So let's see what the left guard and the center can do. Well, neither of them are hitting the guy. They're letting them get a whole bunch of steam in there. All right? Do we understand the center, if he, if he foot fired to the left and then up kicked, and they got their eyes on the backer to the left? Hmm. Let's go to 25. Okay. Okay, so what does the center end up doing anyway? He's kind of doing an up kick, right? The center isn't dropping his kick foot, right? What could that left guard do? Go oh, pound that nose, step forward and punch him, and then get back if you have to, right? And then the center could eventually help to the three once that guard takes him over. But you see the center didn't drop his kick foot. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Oh, oh all right, look at this left guard. And I love Andy Heck, he's a good, all right. The center's got the nose. He used an up kick, right? He blocked him. He said, it's his guy. He didn't kick slide. What about the left guard? He ain't doing shit, right? What could that left guard do? Even if there's double reading, you know what I mean? They've got some combination of twists and fire zones and shit. That left guard could do what? Don't go anywhere, right? Whether I step forward and, or... Because if shit happens, they're going to come to you. Or they're going to run a nosy pick where the guy's going to come here to the guard and the guy's going around, the center's going to have to get him. You good? So 
play 30. Okay. All right. Okay. Now this is more. They kind of did it, right? The center and the right guard. And it's not even a play action. I don't care if it's three steps, five steps, seven steps. All right, here's the center, all right? He's got that nose. He does not have 55, all right? So who's probably more dangerous? The three technique, right? But you see how the center and the right guard are both ended up to the same side as the shade? And you see the left guard all alone on the three technique? It could be the guy from the Rams. It could be the guy. So I'm saying is you can't slide protect every play to the three technique. So when you're not even in slide protection, as long as the center uses an up kick, he may end up with the drop foot to the side of the three after that guard helps him, blah, blah, blah. Because what stunts can they do, all right? If they're doing a twist or a stunt, the nose guard is probably going to do what? Cross face to center. He's going to go cross. Think of all the different twists that you can see to the right side, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay. The center and the right guard are going to the right. What's the center doing? Nada. Right? Are the linebackers coming? Probably not, right? They're 100 yards deep, right? Their feet are spread wide. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Okay, the center, the left guard, and left tackle have got 53, 95, 31, 57. The back's going to the right. So they got a double read to the left. What could the center do right now, even if he misses the guy because the guy loops out? All right, kind of, kind of go parallel, you foot fire laterally, and then step forward and crush that one. Put your hands on him. Okay, I'll do one more. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the center and the left guard have got, are going to the left. What do I like? Which guy do I like? The left guard, right? What foot could the center step with? Left foot, up kick, left foot. And where would my feet then be? Where would my body presence by the center be? Which foot would be back? His right foot to the side of the three. Okay, so fellas, what we did do when I started, the only thing I was talking about, and Paul Alexander covered it, was being, remember, this hand and this lift. Boom, boom. If the guy goes inside, the lift goes to a clamp, which brings your hips, okay? That's the first thing we pretty well talked about, all right? And we talked about this, with this thing driving back. We talked about when you land this thing here, you pull it back right now case they do knock it down. Then we went to all the up kick stuff pretty much with Alex who came up here. The only thing he said wrong was that he said he goes, uh, no, he, he put his hand way out there, right? And then we looked at a few tackles doing it, okay? So all I'm saying is that when you're looking for some technique, okay, to get on a guy fast, you might want to consider the up kick, all right? If the guy's more head up or inside, you might want to use an up post, Okay, but it's all proactive, meaning the hand and the foot both going forward, not reactive here, here, boom, whatever that. But the whole thing is this stuff, okay, which lengthens that arm. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it. Well, well, the left guard, I got a guy right here, okay? I'm the left guard. The center's going this way. There's a big ass hole there, right? So I'm the left guard. So I said, holy shit, I got to go. So I'm going to drop this foot to stay in front of him, okay? And I'm moving, and boom! That becomes the closest hand. 
what's he doing? If he goes out, I drop this foot and stay in front. Yeah, if he goes in, boom, uppercut, clamp. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. But by that time, the play's probably over. Okay? So on the up kick, you can land it on the first step. You kind of take a big step, right? You can land it on, you can foot fire, you know, laterally, one, two, up kick. Tackles might go kick slide, kick slide, boom, up kick. Okay? We're good? Okay, we're done. Thank you. Everybody here um, can agree that uh, we have to do something about this. Now, I don't want to beat it up because um, one of the things, uh, you know, I think it was in 2012 when I first came out here, Bob, um, and I presented some things on taking the head out of the game. And, and, uh, but really, what I realized, what the, the most effective thing to do for us, I believe, as far as an approach goes, is to always focus on performance. Because if you focus on safety, I mean, no one, not, and none of us get up out of bed in the morning excited to be safe, right? You want to come out and you want to win. So the things that I want, that I think that really moves the needle are showing people how, um, how we can optimize our performance, our players' performance. Um, and it's really about mechanics, okay? So, uh, and then drilling. Bob talks about unconscious competence. That's something that um, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about that and, and, and provide you guys with some, some tangible things that we can do. Because it, it's really, uh, and I agree with John's assessment in terms of the, uh, the terminology, we gotta be real careful with that. Um, the hat placement one that comes to mind, you know. When you say hat placement, well, obviously that just you're, you're telling someone to put their head on someone, right? So those are those are the things we're looking to get away from. But let me just not talk about that anymore. Let's start talking about what to do. Um, some things that I can hopefully you guys can take away from this presentation um, that'll help you, your your team, your players um, perform at a higher level, and then, uh, by deduction you'll have um, a safer experience for them. So that's why the my slogan is safety through superior technique. Um, we are a unique group. I mean, offensive linemen, I believe it's the only position of all, in all of sports um, whose role is to, is to protect other players, protect another player. I think that's the only position in any sport. So we're really unique in that regard. But who protects the protectors? Who protects the protectors? Like with law enforcement, who protects them? Nobody. They protect themselves. Well, we're, we're the protectors, and we've got to protect ourselves. And as coaches, we've got to give players our tools to, to help them protect themselves and you do that through superior technique you don't do it through I mean I'll be honest I don't think you do it through equipment you know you don't, you don't need equipment I mean equipment is important um, and you want to make sure it's all there but that's a backup it's not the primary tool especially when you're talking about helmets so the idea here is that we want to protect ourselves through better methodologies and then skill development um, which is what I'm going to show you guys today real quickly um, the first thing we're going to cover I'm going to just real briefly touch on it some common breakdowns that limit performance um, things that are limiting performance and, and also increasing risk for players for injury. Um, then I'm going to get into the principles of contact for shoulder blocking. So uh, I'm not going to cover all the things John t uh, talked about, but just to dovetail off of his presentation, here's some things like when we're pulling, you know, hitting guys in space. Um, there's certain collisions that are going to require um, the shoulders. I mean, there's just collisions that you cannot lead with your hands because it's just too violent, too, too much speed that closing, uh, in closing. So uh, I'm going to cover some things on pulls, how to really dominate guys. Um, and both uh, from a safety end, but really more from the performance end, as I said, and control. So we want to be under the, the best control uh, to, and then be the, as strong as possible, right? So to, to do that and without head contact, and, and that's the only way because your head is, like Bob said, you know, your head is really the weakest link. Why use that first? Um, the next thing, um, and then we're going to get into the drills, okay? Um, the drills are, is really what I want to spend the majority of my, my presentation on, so I'm going to breeze through this stuff quick, all right? Here's uh, some common technique breakdowns that... Um, that I want to share. Midline contact, obviously, if you're hitting a man down the midline, there's only one option here. There's only one solution or one outcome. It's head contact, right? So we want to get away from that. I'm going to just talk about how we do that. Staggered feet on contact. Uh, John mentioned same foot, same shoulder. I'll say this. Um, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to look into that. I'm going to share some things. I'm going to talk about what that term actually does. I don't know that it's always the best for blocking um, because it kind of, when you get a, a big stagger, you're, you're, in, you're, in, you're, in, you're compromised and I'll show you why. The third is head down and, and that kind of works in, you know, hand in hand with staggered feet and then the arms outside the frame of the body. But here's a couple clips you can watch. This is a fullback, right? But it's the same thing. Watch this midline contact. You only got one, one thing that can happen there. Um, next, uh, the guard, left guard here. 
Um, he, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't offset the body at all, so he's going head down the middle. Watch this. Now, this is what I mean by one foot in front. You know, same foot, same shoulder, right? Well, his hips are, are disabled. Same thing here. This guy's base is poor, this fullback. Watch, his, his, he leads with one foot in front, and he's not sustainable. So um, we're going to cover uh, a couple techniques uh, that, that'll help, or drills that'll help develop that. Here's another one, another example of a, of a tackle striking with one foot in front of the other, which ultimately leads to head contact. Um, and finally here, um, a full, another fullback shot, one foot in front. And, and what happens here is that you can't sustain contact after the fit because you're not in control. So I'll, I'm going to try to prove to you guys uh, what I'm saying. Here's another example, uh, one foot in front. Uh, for sustaining the block, not just, and, and we're talking performance issues here. So that's that. Um, moving on. Okay, so here's what, um, what I call principles of contact for shoulder, uh, shoulder blocks. The first thing we want to do is come to balance. When you see a lot of those clips that John had showed, okay, um, in the Doug Marone video, many of the times when those, most of the time when those head, when it's head to head contact, a guy's uh, usually not coming to balance. He's running, he's out of control, his head's out in front, right? So then when you see really dominant blocks, the, the guys get their feet behind them, they're kind of under control. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're coming fast, but they're, but they're going to come to balance. What is come to balance? Well, um, it's like break down, right? Well, so I'm running in, in a, with linear feet, right, this way for speed. As soon as contact is emergent, is, is, is becomes imminent, my base starts to widen. Okay? My toes start to point out, my steps start to shorten, and I condense my body, and I'm in a position where I can strike with both feet behind me. Okay? So that's, that's uh, what we mean by coming to balance, and, that's, uh, and i got some video to show you. The next thing is, this is one of the most important things, even if you don't come to balance, well, you, can, you can protect your head by triangulating. What I mean by triangulating is attacking the man off the center line. John pointed out again, too, we don't ever want to attack a guy down the midline. Um, in any fighting art, you don't ever see a guy, or, or wrestling, you're never going to see a guy go down the midline. It doesn't make any sense to do that. It's not the most effective way to do it, um, and it's really ineffective. And, but we can control that by offsetting. By the way, every play in football should have an entry of the ball, correct? So if the ball is entering to the left, then why are we hitting down the midline? We want to try to take our body and put it in position um, in between uh, the defender and the ball carrier. So that should always be able to uh, dictate which side we're going to, we're going to take it to triangulate, which also, um, with triangulating, it's attacking a soft target. Always attack a soft target. Never attack a, a, a hard target. You know, that's, that's, the guy's the strongest down the middle. So we're going to attack a soft target by, by triangulating. Um, the next is, is having a square base. The 90 degree rule, if you can see this, this picture, um, it's, it's going to come up a little bit later. I'm probably going to be able to show you um, a little better with other pictures, but I don't know if you can see it. But the, the 90 degree rule, this is a huge coaching point that I think we can all look at. When you're striking with that, with, if I'm striking with my right shoulder, my opposite foot, um, is bracing, okay, and I want the instep to be perpendicular to the center of force right down the ear of the man. Um, and I'll give, again, I'll show you guys more specifically what that looks like. Um, but, but we talk about, when you see, or hear coaches talk about the near foot, near shoulder, here's just a caveat to that. Um, the, the near foot, I've heard coaches say the near foot, the front foot, is the power foot. But in reality, there's no power generated from that foot. It's all coming from the rear foot. The rear foot is dictating and driving force on contact with the shoulder, period. And I'll show you more, more clips and examples of that. Um, but, but checking to make sure that that toe is out. And I have some drills that we can test that and put players in the optimal position. The last thing is, is feet behind, hands in front. I know you've heard uh, Coach McNally, Bob, other guys talk about that. That's, a pro that's just a posture you want to be in in football. You want to have your when we're, we're strongest with our feet behind us. And the reason is because, um, again, w we can use our hips. We're in a position where we can move laterally. We've got control and strength, okay? Next up, we're going to go through some clips of some, some blocks that, that I like um, where the players are using these principles, okay? And we're going to touch on them. Here's the left guard for the Bengals, okay? So watch, he's coming to balance. His feet are behind, okay? He's triangulating, and there's going to be a little graphic here. He's triangulating, okay? He's fitting on the inside out. Um, he's offset his helmet. His feet are behind. They're parallel. They're not, he doesn't have too big of a stagger. That allows his hips to come through. His hands are in front of his body, and if you look at that brace foot at 90 degrees, so that brace foot drives back in because you're not just attacking him down you know, in, on a vertical plane, you're squeezing back into him using that brace foot. And that's what allows, uh, that, to, that, that makes it possible um, when, when you have that posture of the foot. So we always want to look at those things as coaches. Here's another clip of it um, on a trap pull now. Okay, watch both feet behind. He comes to balance. He's not, he's not sprinting out of control. He's got his feet, boom, his feet are down. 
He's got his instep, at least on the, on the left side, that's where the brace foot matters. It's in the ground. He's triangulated inside out with his, uh, his helmet's inside out. His shoulder is fitting. Hands are in front and feet behind. Um, parallel base, and, and it's, it's an excellent trap block. It's an example of why that works. Here's a, a great clip of, uh, this kid's name's Chris Manhurts. He plays for the Panthers. Uh, Jim uh, McNally found Chris. Chris is a former basketball player. Literally, what, four years ago, started playing football. Never played football in his life. Finds, uh, Jim finds him. We trained him. Um, he's one of the, I think he's one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL right now. Um, never learned any, he had to learn how to put a helmet on. <laughs> that was the first time you put a helmet on was in the NFL, but he also learned how to block. Um, and and we're, if you watch all the principles here, he's dominating guys um, as a lead blocker. Um, he's, a, he's blocking guys on the line of scrimmage. He's very powerful, but it's all mechanics and and uh, it shows, watch, he's finishing guys. I mean, some of the stuff you see Chris do, it's like a huddle highlight film of some kid just blasting through people, and they're NFL players. It's unbelievable, but we attribute that to, uh, to, to, the, to the technique that he's developed. Um, another example here um, on the goal line, 90-degree rule. You can see the foot. He gets driving through. He's triangulating. All these things are uh, kind of present. Just be, um, you know, I want to show you a few other options, uh, clips of it. Um, how effective they are. I love this clip here, this fullback. Watch. He sets his feet, boom, triangulates, and then squeezes back into him. That's where the guy's really soft. After you hit him on that angle and you drive back and you squeeze back into him, that's where you get your finishes. It's not as much of a vertical finish. You're not pushing him this way. You're kind of squeezing back into him, and he's softer. You're going to get those nice finishes. So that's the couple clips to see what, you know, how, we, how, we, how I'm teaching it and, and, how, uh, and why you know, you're showing uh, success with, without head contact, right? Um, the next thing is, I want to just talk about this. You guys have all heard the word teeter before, I believe. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's applicable to, to hands, right? When we're coming up low to high on the double under, all that stuff. We want to teeter forward. What that means is, it's my weight is shifting forward in the moment before impact. Both feet behind, I'm teetering forward. Similar to like, if you were to dive in a swimming pool, but you don't want your heels to come up. As soon as you get to that point where your, your body shifts forward, you're going to um, save yourself by uncoiling your hips. And in this case, uh, if you watch the, the clip, it should be playing here. There you go. So teetering right before contact, okay? You can see that there with both feet behind. And that's, uh, that's something to, to develop, okay? So I'm going to keep moving here. I don't want to get to the drills. All right, so here's the first drill. I, I need a guy. Can, does anybody want to jump up here and help me out? You're not going to get hurt. Oh, come on up. Somebody. Taylor, you might be a little small, buddy. Oh, you can do it. Come on up. All right. I just I don't want to offend you. <laughs> All right, so look, I want to talk about this first drill. Um, one of the things, and, I, and John brought it up, and, and Bob's brought it up, um, but the... Uh, I, I believe this to be true. Um, the thing that, uh, that we really like to do is we like to start our, our, our uh, start skill development uh, and drilling from a fit position. So starting kind of where you finish. It's real, uh, to me, it's, it's so important because I think traditionally everybody talks about you start your stance, you run, you sprint, and then you, know, then you strike a guy. Then the, the bottom line is you're not develop, you want to develop the, the posture, right? Where you are from a fit position. What's optimal? Let the guys feel it, like Bob mentioned about the head. Just different things that you can do so guys go, dang, that really works. That makes sense. Because if you teach a person the destination, well, then they can kind of understand how to get there a little bit faster. They understand, okay, I get the goal now, coach. I want to feel like I'm really strong at, at contact. So what we do is start from a fit. It's the safest way to do it as well. But it does develop the right movements. And then you can test those postures uh, together uh, with your players. So the first one I want to do is uh, the fit to finish drill. So I might just stand up here with Taylor. Okay. Um, the, it's really the first element is a posture check. And this is what I mean by the 90 degree rule, if you can look here, um, that, that, that graphic, the foot, the instep of the foot should be pointed to a direction that where it kind of um, aims 90 degrees down at, at the V of the neck or the ear, inside ear, so it allows you to offset your body and squeeze back into the man. So this particular drill is going to develop that. Um, one thing I want to mention about the tip of the spear, when it comes to the shoulder, that's the first and most meaningful act in an offensive. We're going to strike somebody with our shoulder. Okay, let's make that shoulder real firm. I don't hear a lot of conversation about this, but I want to talk about it. How do I make my shoulder firm? I want to take, you know, we, keep, we talk about hands in front. I want to drive my shoulder down and forward, okay, when I'm about to strike. 
you create a really strong surface and edge, and it also builds a lot of structure. It's, it's protecting your capsule of the shoulder. In other words, I don't want to be like this and up, upright when I strike. It's going to get blown back. So as I'm, in the moments before contact, I'm going to drop that, for, that shoulder forward, down and forward, and it's a super strong edge. I don't want to strike with my chest. I want to strike with the tip of the spear, the tip of the shoulder, okay? And once you strike someone with that, it's, and there's guys that do it in the NFL, and you've seen guys that do it. It's really powerful, and it's, and it's very disruptive. So developing that is, is important. So we can kind of do that with this particular drill. Taylor's going to join me. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, we're going to start from the fit. So Taylor and I are going to be in this like coil position. Okay, we're going to put shoulder to shoulder. Go ahead, Taylor, put it right here, buddy. Okay, now I'm, I'm in this position, okay? I'm not very strong right here, but, but, um, because I don't have my brace angle yet. My 90 degree isn't exact, isn't there yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say brace. I'm going to drop that brace foot. Taylor, brace your left foot for me. Brace that back, at, at, no, turn it open. Watch what I'm doing. Boom. There you go. Okay. Now, now I say brace. Now I want you to squeeze, squeeze into me. Boom, okay? Okay, I'm gonna work into him that way. See, I, I could probably, I don't wanna throw you off the stage, dude. Um, but the point is that like, you wanna have this brace and you, you can feel it. You can feel like where you're at. So let's say I, I take a poor brace. Taylor, Taylor, you're gonna take a good brace, take that 90 degree brace where that, that uh, angle's perpendicular. Okay, brace your left foot. And I'm not gonna brace, I'm gonna turn my toe in. Now, now squeeze into me. Now, he, now I have to drop my foot to get that strength. So we're just trying to show these guys where they're strong, right? Does it make sense to everybody? Is it hard to see or tell what I'm talking about here? No, it's a little bit difficult. You guys got it? Cool. So now, once you get that idea, right, um, we can start getting into competition. And I think that c competing is the best thing for us for development. You always compete. And you don't have to necessarily do comp uh, you know, impact drills to compete. In the off season, you compete all the time and that's how people grow. You, do, you cannot grow what you do not measure. So how do you know you're getting any better at football when you're not competing all the time? So these kind of drills can be implemented all year round, and that's important for, to get to that level of unconscious competence, um, where you can make everything second nature. So this is the first element of that drill. Once you get into that, then you can make it competitive. We're not going to do it here, <coughs> where I'm trying to push the guy back or sustain control. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can start adding hands. And I want to talk about that real briefly. Uh, Taylor, come here, Ben. Um, Adding hands, okay, after contact. As I come up and I strike, okay, this position, I drop that shoulder, I'm striking with this hand. This hand is down, right? Because I'm dropping my shoulder in. And when I, when I fit, I mean, you could, uh, I wanna make it real clear. We're not gonna hit our flipper right away. If you decide to use a flipper, great, okay? But some guys, when you come up on the rise and try to hit the flipper first, well, it's a lot of, it's a lot of force on your shoulder and it's not really, you're, you're limiting, restricting the impact, right? You want the, sh the shoulder to strike first, boom, uncoil, and then the, sh the shoulder can come through, the flipper can come through. Or we could do a hay bale, right? Do you guys know what that is? So if I'm striking here, boom, I'll go ahead and fit, fit them here. Boom, I get lift, and then I could sneak that hay bale in, right on, what, single hand under, okay? Right under the pad, boom, lift, okay? And climb my hips and continue to finish. The other hand, right? So you'll notice this, when we talk about hands in front, really on shoulder fits, it's only the shoulder, the only hand that, matter, that really has to be in front is the side of the sh where, where the shoulder is connecting. The other hand, it doesn't have to be in front. It could be here. And why I want it here? Why do I want this shoulder, this hand here? Because as I fit Taylor here, push into me. Now, now I get into him. What if he spins back this way? Spin back. My hand's here to protect that. One, two, is I can add my hand to his hip and wash him down. I call that a fillet. So he's like this. As I start to fit, I can add that hand to the, to the hip and I can wash him down. It's a great location to, to move a guy. So why can't we do that drill all the time? doesn't involve any impacts, they don't even need shoulder pads. So that's the, what we call the fit to finish drill. Okay, now we could do this with a kick out block. Taylor's gonna do, I want you to turn sideways, perfect, you're gonna face that way. Okay, this is the defender, I'm, I'm trapping. Okay, he's coming up, now I'm, I'm coming to this position here, I'm gonna be striking with inside out, right? So go ahead and get a two point stand here again, buddy. Now I'm in this position, and I, you're gonna brace your left foot laterally. And I'm gonna brace it here, and I'm gonna squeeze. I'm going to try to climb my hips. So one of the things I want to mention too about on these blocks, don't, uh, one of the best ways after contact to really get, be effective on these pulls and traps and all those things is to after contact, right? Don't drive your feet. You don't want to get caught with your feet behind you. Um, can you hold me up, man? Okay, if I'm in this, or get sideways. So I'm in this position, hold me, hold me up. With my feet behind me and I start doing this, I'm restricting the hole a little bit, right? I want to close my hips to the man. So much better. Number one, it protects my legs. I don't want to get run over or get run up on. And it also defines the running lane for the back, for the ball carrier. 
So this is what I mean by that. I'm in this position, my feet are behind. I want to close my hips off, and now I've created a larger space for the, for the back. Okay. So those are the two types of drills we'll do. Um, you know, with, from the fit position. Now, now we're going to take it, we're, like I said, we're starting from the fit and we're going to go backwards. So the next drill, here's a little uh, clip of it. I call this coil to fit. We're starting from a two point coil stance, like I showed, okay, from a little bit of spacing. Now we're going to simulate a minor impact before we get into live contact drills, okay? So here's two, uh, an example, two guys doing it. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to do like a square fit, okay? So we're going to teeter, rock forward, strike as if we're hitting a guy, like we're square pulling through the line of scrimmage on a, on a pull, okay, on like power. And then we're going to do one if we're kicking out, okay? Um, just the, the defender, the partner is going to have different angles. So here's an example of two guys doing it, okay, um, with a kick out fit. So they're just teetering and striking. It's a minor impact. They brace and squeeze, okay? Now they might get into competitive stuff. Boom. Okay, now he tries to spin back. Now we're working all the all the, re the reactions after contact. So it's a, good, it's a good drill to develop that again, take it to the next step that you can do in the off season. So when you come season, your, your guys are gonna start to look like that. They're able to, to strike with a ton of power, take the head out, but really most importantly, win, okay? I'm not gonna demonstrate that with Taylor. Um, okay, now the last one. Come to balance fit. This is before you get into the full speed stuff. Um, we're, we want to start to get to emulate, emulate a real impact, but what we're going to do is not, we're not going to just go straight out the gate full speed. So we want to show control. One thing that I think is really important that I've learned, um, didn't know this as a player, but if you can do anything, anything at a really low speed without, with, with perfect mechanics, I mean, it's, you could do it at a really high speed. Okay. So the problem I think with, with players, it's like, we don't really know the mechanics. So we just try to go faster. So it's just, when in doubt, I'm just gonna try to hit you harder. Well, let's do this at some extremely slow speeds. Like, how slow can you go? Where I'm coming to balance, I get this position, teeter, rock forward, coil, uncoil, fit, all that stuff in a slow, slow process. And we could dissect that in a safer manner, but also because it shows the total body control and you have that mastered that technique. So it's like, to me, when you get out there in real competition, if you get to that level of unconscious competence where everything is second nature, then when you dial up the speed now, all you're doing is dialing up the speed. But it's like, a, it's like listening to a song on the radio. When you listen to the song at a low volume, it should sound the same. The lyrics should not be different than the lyrics of the, when you turn the volume up. But what happens is sometimes you turn the volume up in the football right away, and the guys go into that fight or flight state, and then all bets are off. You know, it's a mess. The, their technique goes, it goes to shit. In this case, what we're going to do we're going to try to slow it down, slow it down, and then incrementally build it up. So I'm going to show you a, an example of that, where uh, we're going to start the players off at about, you know, five or ten yards, but basically they're going to come to balance about two yards apart between them. It's kind of hard to see, but there's two, a pad in the, in the middle there. We're going to foot fire, okay, in, in place. And then we're, going to, then we're going to have the coach on the coach's whistle. He's going to say, go. They run. They, they get to the, to the midpoint. They fire their feet. Go again. Okay, we want them to be able to be under control, and then they're going to fit. Okay, so here's a, here's a clip of it. Okay, boom, nice and easy. Um, I think the, the kid on the right here is not dropping. His, he's kind of striking with the top of his shoulder. I want him to drop that down more, okay? He's not going to be nearly as strong if you strike here. I want to dip that down a little bit. So like this, this is me. So if you watch that again, I'm coming to balance, teeter, boom. I get him up off the ground. This is a half-speed drill. You know, we should be able to lift him up off the ground. We should be able to do those things in really a slow manner. So if we're, if we're developing that way. So that's the, uh, the coil to fit uh, or from the come to balance. So from there, you can start to ramp up speed. You can start to do more distances and things like that. So um, I like adding hands and doing those things too to work finishes. Um, but anyway, those are three drills that, uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. Because when we talk about safety and all that stuff, we say what not to do. Let's get real specific about what to do. I love the, you know, I love the fact that the conversation's evolving where more and more people are talking about it, but let's, uh, let's do stuff about it because I think what happens with kids, when you tell them, hey, don't do that, what, what do you get? It's, yeah, they, right? If you get, don't tell someone, hey don't, hey, don't do that, man. Don't do that. I'm like, all right, what the hell do I do? I mean, I had that a lot as a player. Come on, man, don't do that. You know, or, that's terrible. I'm like, okay, what do I do? Be specific, be really clear, and that's why I try to get as clear as we can, and that's, uh, that's a big, it's very important for, for, all, for all, a number of reasons, um, performance being one of them. But the thing here is I'm going to just leave you guys with this last deal. There's a few uh, tips I'll leave you with. Start the drill progressions from an optimal fit position and work backwards. 
It teaches guys how to, where they need to go, where they need to be. Um, it's to me, I, I mean, that's what I do for a living. I don't, I don't uh, work for anybody in particular. I just go out and teach and I'm a resource. I don't get fired, so I, they tell me it works. You know, we watch film, but, um, but my point is like, these are things that we've seen. Uh, uh, and that's my whole aim is, I know the techniques work. Now, what's the goal for me? Well, my goal for, for players and coaches I work with is now we know we want to get them from A to B. A, from, a is the position where they have no idea what they're doing, and B is where they got the, the best technique, they're optimal, and they're, they're, they're doing that um, with unconscious competence where they can not have to think about it, but it happens in real time and, and in full speed uh, drills and, and in competition. Um, so I think this is the best way to do that, starting drills from the fit position. Okay? The next thing is drill with hu real human partners. Um, all right, so not, not a, no offense to guys with sleds and stuff, but like we want to hit, the sled does not really, I don't know one sled that really reflects a human body, okay? It doesn't. It doesn't really move like that. If maybe they can come up, maybe Gilman will come up with one. But like maybe he has one I don't know about. But like I see a lot of those sleds on the, on the fields in high school and, you know, I mean, the Crowther's a great one. I mean, I like that. But, I mean, in terms of, there's nothing better than just playing with the guy. Yeah, playing with the real person. If you want to strike a guy, okay, because you can get the feel for it. The next thing, there's only a couple more. Drill with shoulder pads without a helmet. Did you notice we're doing that? I know there's rules and restrictions, but that is such a big deal. If I can go out and hit some guy without a helmet on, with my shoulders, with shoulder pads on, that's, that's a big, big point for skill development, and it really gets the guys in, in line. Okay? Uh, next, master mechanics at low speed and intensity before advancing. Okay? And uh, drill year round. That's it. Thanks, guys. Um, if I have, if you guys have any questions, do I have to get? We have to get going, right? Is there, are there any questions right now? No questions. Great.